Hey everyone, it's Mike from Just Lifestyle. And recently I have had a pretty tough decision to make. Um, basically for those that don't know, I moved up to a small town called Loughborough last year. Um, and the idea was just to um, get away uh, from London. I, I've been to the area a few times and I just really liked it. So I thought, you know, why not uh, pay half the rent up here and just check it out. and. Um, basically also the accommodation that I was staying in was probably the nicest building I've ever seen in the UK. Um, so I, I couldn't really turn it down. So um, I, I've done that for last year and actually things have worked out really well. Like um, I joined the local chess club, uh, I play some weekly badminton. Um, I've even got some work opportunities here chess wise with Leicestershire juniors. And yeah, it's, it's honestly been a really fun experience. Um, and I, I'm really glad I did it. Uh, but basically, my contract, my flat, is coming to an end and actually they're raising the rent. Uh, so I have no interest in staying on in this place. And I kind of decided that I'm either going to move out of my flat and move into a house share. And the thing is, house shares in the UK are really great because you don't have to pay bills. So electricity, water, whatever, you don't have to pay for it. And you don't have to pay for council tax as well, which depending on where you live in the UK, council tax can like, you know, be quite a lot of money. So the plan was to either move to a house share or I would move back down to London with a few of my friends who are also down to live together in a flat. So I've like over the last week, I've been like really uh, finding it difficult to decide what I should do. And basically I do have to make a decision sooner or later. Um, and there are basically a few uh, difficult factors to weigh up and it pretty much comes down to like Loughborough um, It's such a chill life. I mean, I've got everything I need for food supermarket uh, And also like even the people like I've got a few close friends now and uh, The chess club is really really good fun um, And yeah, it, it's just it's just a great place to be to be honest um, and the only thing that uh, London would have, I mean, the two things, I guess. One is that like most of my friends are in London. So recently, this past year, I haven't really hung out with them much and I've just been doing mostly chess stuff for the year. Um, so it would be nice, I guess, to hang out with more of my friends. Um, and then also uh, there are just more things to do in London. So there were like a few different like, hobbies of mine when I used to live in London. Like I, I would go to uh, this classical music concert hall called the Wigmore Hall and tickets would be five pounds for under 35 years old. And you know, you'd have world-class musicians there. And it was, just, it was just a blessing to be able to listen to these artists. And um, I also had some favorite restaurants. Uh, I also used to go to the cinema that showed like artsy movies and I'd just go by myself and just enjoy uh, that scene. And basically in Loughborough, you only have like a Odeon cine world. So, you know, nothing. Uh, no, you don't get the good international movies uh, at, these, at these cinemas. So basically there were some like uh, factors that, you know, would make me want to move to London. But actually, like, when I like, listed out all the pros and cons, I just really couldn't decide. And it's really funny because I kind of got the idea to try and treat it like a chess position. Like, I know for any of my friends who are watching who aren't chess players, they're going to roll their eyes big time about this. But the point is, if, if you consider my life as a game of chess, this is a fork in the road where I have to decide between two plans. Do I go down to London or do I stay in Loughborough? And it got me thinking about, well, in a normal chess position, how do I decide between two plans, like two plans that both look good? And it reminded me that actually one of the ways that you can think in a chess game is by using the Dorfman's method of assessment. And for anyone who doesn't know, Josef Dorfman uh, was one of uh, the best Russian coaches uh, in the history of chess. And he basically invented two terms in chess, statics and dynamics, which most of you have probably heard of. And the whole point is that these terms can basically characterize certain aspects of the game, which didn't really have a term before. And I think it's completely relevant and completely legit. So basically, um, in a position, you can have uh, static factors that either amount to a static advantage or a static disadvantage. And these factors, Dorfman uh, 
uh, says there are these four very important static factors, which include king safety, material, uh, the resulting position after a queen trade, and uh, the pawn structure. And based on these four factors, uh, if one side is better than the other, uh, these factors are also in hierarchy as well. You can basically determine whether you have a static advantage or not. But here's the interesting thing. With this knowledge of whether you are statically better or not, it can actually dictate the rest of your game. So if you have a static advantage, it is advised that you keep playing in a static manner. So you don't change these four factors too drastically. You just improve the position, playing moves that in increase your static advantage. And at some point, your position will become overwhelmingly strong, where you will have to play dynamically, uh, aka changing one of these four factors, but it will be very clear and very decisive and you will win. Alternatively, if you're in a static disadvantage, this is when you need to play dynamically and to play dynamically means changing one of these four factors. So either changing the king's safety, changing the material balance, changing like swapping off the queens, uh, trading, uh, changing the pawn structure. If you change one of these four static factors, uh, this would be a dynamic move and this can increase your chances to turn the tables and win. And I realized that this is actually directly applicable to life because when you have a bad situation in life, let's say certain things are not going well with friends or family or money or whatever factor it might be, it's normally a good idea to try and switch things up, right? You don't want to just stay in this situation forever. And interestingly, if you have a situation that is going very well and working very well, you want to maximize the situation the most. And only then, once you've maximized your static advantage, then you want to switch with a dynamic move. And it got me thinking about, you know, like, well, what is my situation in Loughborough right now? You know, I've been here a year, I've established some connections, um, you know, is my time up or not? And it kind of made me realize that, you know, throughout this year in Loughborough, I've basically been doing chess and only chess. All of my friends are chess related. Like I've got one guy who's a 60 year old who acts more like a 30 year old, but anyway, uh, he's a 60 year old. And then my other close friend is a 12 year old. And then I've got a couple of friends in between. And <laughs> these are my these are my closest friends in Loughborough. So it's, it's all chess related. And basically, um, I feel like I don't think I have maximized my strengths and my static advantages. Like, I think I've still got unfinished business up here in the sense that uh, I was looking forward to doing another season with the Loughborough Chess Club and try and see if we can improve on our league standing. We came third this year, but maybe we can come second, maybe even first. Um, and also I've got some goals as a player. And like, even though in this past year, I haven't made uh, too many of my goals. Like, uh, I mean, I, I wanted to hit national master, maybe improve my fee day. Um, the current situation is that my uh, ECF has improved a little bit, but not by much. And my FIDE has gone down a lot. <laughs> um, but I have reached 2,500 uh, online, which I've never been able to do before. And also when I look at my chest now, I feel like I'm definitely more consistent as a player. And to be a stronger player, this consistency is absolutely key because obviously when everything is going well, then you can rise like lots of rating. And when I was a junior, I did exactly that. But uh, obviously I had some huge setbacks as you've probably heard if you've been following this channel. Um, and that obviously takes your rating down. But I feel like right now I'm probably at a very consistent uh, strength. And this is very promising because it means like I'm, I'm kind of like more level headed going into like my improvement. So in this regard, I think that another year in Loughborough would not be a bad idea. Improve my static advantages. And then only once I've got the maximum out of the position, then I will uh, switch to some dynamic play to convert my situation into something even better. So I think in that sense, it makes the most sense to stay in Loughborough, continue living uh, this chess lifestyle to the fullest, and my friends will just have to wait. So <laughs> I think that's, uh, that's the conclusion. And yeah, I honestly think like, you know, lots of people like laugh at me, my friends, especially when I, when I start like talking about how chess and life like go hand in hand in terms of like, you know, how you approach uh, both chess and life. And honestly, like there are so many aspects where you can like 
you know, really improve your decisions in life based on like, you know, certain principles you learn from chess. And it's kind of freaky how useful it is. And I think just as a final note, I think one of the best things I have done in my last, like, I don't know, six years of being an adult and like maturing as a person is just improving my intuition like a lot. And when I say intuition, I'm not talking about over the chessboard, but I just mean in life. Like, I feel like, you know, you know, just like in a chess game, you can either calculate or you can be intuitive. And I feel like, you know, nowadays I can kind of like trust my gut a lot based on a lot of uh, decisions and even important decisions. And so far, like things have been really good. And I think it's only happened because I've consciously made an effort to improve my intuition. And I think like, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just useful to, to be able to like uh, take a step back from, uh, you know, you know, this complicated life that you might be living and just apply some basic principles. <laughs> and it's really that simple. So uh, yeah, if you have any problems in your life, maybe try sitting down and treating it like a chess position and maybe you'll find some resolution. So that is my uh, two cents of wisdom for y'all today. And yeah, I hope you have a nice day. So um, I'd like to conclude just by saying that uh, I will be traveling uh, abroad. I think I mentioned this uh, last, um, last video. And basically I wouldn't be able to do uh, as much traveling as, I, as I'm doing if not for the help of these amazing supporters on Patreon who also kind of forced me to train chess and make videos and know my shit. So I really appreciate you guys. Uh, that's Chester Over 50, Goji Shack, Zach and Bear Fang. You guys are awesome. And thank you for supporting. So I uh, hope that was interesting, but different from the usual video. And see you next time. Bye-bye.